Guys, today we're going to take a look at bartering. Why should you have items for bartering? Uh, one thing about the whole prepper community, the survival community, is you know we try to have everything we need. We try to look ahead. We try to forecast. We want to make sure we have enough food or enough water, uh, enough supplies to be able to get us through. But the big problem is you can't have everything you need. You don't know the future. You don't know what's going to happen. There may be some things that you are seriously in need of that just aren't available for whatever reason. One of the things that I'm big about is having items that I can barter with because barter is currency. Again, you can't have everything you want, so go ahead and plan to have extra things that you know people will be looking for in a SHTF situation or just a major economic meltdown. Now, first and foremost is security when it comes to bartering and trading. You don't want for someone to see what you have barter and trade and then them come back later and take it and so one of the things I think is very important is to think about do you trust this person do you know this person uh, also do you really want them coming to your house one of the big things that happens all over the world especially in third world countries is they have marketplaces it's places where people bring their goods and services or their trades and then they can barter and trade right there together and so I think one of the things that could happen if supplies start to run out, if the stores are out of goods, is you're going to see markets open up. And to me, that is one of the most secure ways to be able to bring your goods. And that's the way man has done it from the beginning. And I think it's a great way to keep yourself secure and yet have a good group to come in with different items and to be able to trade for things that you may be looking for. Because that's really going to be the problem. Let's say I have something that somebody wants and they don't have what I want. And so being able to make that trade, you're going to have a better chance if you're in a marketplace type setting. Now guys, precious metals, it's one of those things that gives you a known value. And that is one thing, especially if you're going with junk type silver. Uh, these are all pre-64 dimes, quarters, and uh, even some older mercury dimes, things like that. But this is... A very reasonable price when you bring in a quarter like this people know that's what it is and they can see the date it's really easy to be able to identify uh, now you can also get your walking liberties and then you can get your silver bars uh, you can actually get more wealth out of these but the one thing about the quarters and the dimes is that they're small I can take a dime and I can buy some things with it it's very easy to use and I don't have to spend like a walking liberty for something that I'm desperately needing that I could have gotten for a dime. And so it's one of those things, to me, I like to have both. I like to have different sources because sometimes I may need this in larger quantities. A lot of stores a couple of years ago opened up and started taking silver as trade. Uh, it was when we had our economic recession a while back. And then down in Argentina, when they had their economic meltdown, all the stores opened up and people started using silver. The other thing about silver and gold is that it's not necessarily for investing, it's really to protect your wealth. It's one of the things I talk about a lot. And it, give, it retains your value. While the dollar could drop in value really quickly, uh, with silver, it actually goes way up. Now, I'm gonna kind of break this down into different segments, and I'm gonna try to start with the most important first. And of course, food is definitely one of those things that people are gonna need, especially if markets are closed and transportation's down. Uh, one thing that I would recommend, though, is to think about quantities. You want smaller quantities to be able to give out because the larger the quantity, the more expensive and the more you're going to trade out. And you can take those smaller quantities, add them together to make a large, but it's going to be more difficult to take a large quantity and make it small. There's a number of different type foods. We have just regular dehydrated food. We have canned food, which is definitely a big favorite. It's pretty inexpensive. And then you have your lifeboat food. Then you have your dry goods. One of the things about dry goods to me is my barter items. I, I don't really want to trade off my lifeboat food and my dehydrated foods because they are very versatile. I can use those in a lot of situations. My canned food will last forever as well. Uh, taking dried beans and rice especially, uh, not only that, you can buy small bags and you can trade these off. And so that's something you can buy in bulk. It's very inexpensive. But here's the big kicker, is make sure you have some way to divide it up. So having some Ziploc bags, and that will apply to a lot of different things. And being able to make that a smaller size. Right here, after the first of the year here, we saw grocery stores empty out, prices going up. And so having a good supply of food is important for you, but it will also be very important to others. 
Next is drinkable water, uh, which is just as important as food. Uh, one of the problems is there's obviously a lot of creeks and ponds and everything else around, uh, but the water is not clean. And so having a good source for your water, uh, and this of course is a gallon jug. First off for us, we use the Big Berkey. Uh, it is a water filtration system. We can filter 6,000 gallons of water out of our Berkey. Uh, one thing I would recommend is keeping your standard water bottles. Uh, water bottles like this, just keep those on hand and you can refill them. And that way you can give people water in this size, or you can even do your gallon jugs, but you can give those out as you need to. Um, and this is something that people are going to come back to a number of times. And so having good, clean, drinkable water is going to be important, especially if the municipal water systems go down. Or obviously you can go with water filters. Uh, here we have just a life straw and then we have one of the Frontier filter straws. I love these because they really filter a lot of water. It's actually a better filter than the life straw, but the life straw will get you through. Uh, the only problem is, is these are more expensive and if you're gonna trade these out, uh, it is a renewable source of water for whoever takes these. Uh, it will give them a lot more water than just a gallon. So you have to weigh that out what's easier for you. The next two that are related to food is salt and sugar. Guys, you need salt to live. I mean, it's very important for us to have salt. And when you get with, especially the dried beans and rice, uh, you need to be able to season it and at least have salt. Of course, other spices are great to have as well, but uh, the salt is something we need to live and that is important to have and it's cheap. And again, you don't have to give them a one pound can. You can actually divide this up in your Ziploc bags. And then the sugar. People are addicted to sugar. We have so much sugar in our diet. And so it's really important to have sugar on hand, but also to be able to barter with it would be great. In fact, sugar at one point was the currency of the world and so was salt. Uh, during the Roman Empire, the Roman soldiers were actually paid with salt. And that's where a man's not worth his salt comes from. But these are two items that people are going to really want. Medical supplies. That goes without saying. Uh, people are going to be desperate if they need medical supplies. They're going to be looking for it. Uh, whether it's a trauma kit, whether it's just Advil, Imodium, Tylenol, Benadryl, those kind of things. It's going to be important for people that can't get these things. They're really going to need some help. And with the health, that's important. You should have your own supply, but having some extras or something that people are going to be looking for. And again, it just turns into currency. Alcohol, especially in a bad environment where things are really going south, alcohol is going to be something that you can store up, but it's really going to be sought after. And a lot of people, especially if they want to have a drink or whatever, you know, this will give them the ability. Uh, and plus, there's a lot of uses for alcohol, not only just for drinking. But definitely your wine, it'll last a long time. Your, your liquors will last a long time. Of course, beer, you know, you're gonna be a little bit more limited with beer. Uh, so really I would stock up more on wine and on liquor. And of course you can have medicinal purposes, especially for whiskey and honey. This is something that people are really gonna be seeking after if these are not available. Next is tobacco. And uh, guys, uh, people are addicted to nicotine. And I just have some cigars here, but even cigarettes or, you know, dip, snuff, uh, whatever, Copenhagen, uh, you know, there's a number of different things that you can get uh, to take care of that nicotine habit. But for me, I like to smoke a cigar every once in a while anyway. So having a, a number of cigars, it just makes it a nice prep. Definitely ammunition, and we've already seen that ammunition is drying up everywhere. Companies are making this stuff as fast as possible, and so keeping your eye out for good ammunition. I would definitely pick really popular calibers uh, to make sure I have that set aside. But even if you just give a few rounds per person, I mean, that is one thing you can do. You can break up these boxes, but uh, this is 50 rounds right here. And really, I would suggest 22 long rifle, 9mm, 38 special, even 30-30, and 30-06, 308, 5.56, and 2.23. Those are gonna be some of the most popular. And of course, having magazines could be good, but magazines are pretty specific to each gun, so that may be very difficult to do. And then obviously behind me, we have a lot of firearms, and these can be used as barter items, especially if you have ammunition for whatever you have, an extra ammunition. One thing I wanna say, guys, is, you know, I've seen a lot of people complaining about, you know, with a shortage of ammo, but you really need to have a stockpile of ammo anyway, and that way you can barter it if you need to during good times and then buy it up before bad times hit. So firearms are definitely a big one for bartering. 
Having coffee. Coffee's definitely something that a lot of people have an SHTF if they don't have it, and I'm included in that bunch. But having some kind of coffee, we get these big coffee cans. Uh, one thing you can do is, is again, divide that out, get some Ziploc bags, and just make things a little bit smaller. Obviously, if it's something larger you want to trade in, you can do it. But uh, I would really typically get smaller coffee containers to be able to divide out a little bit easier. And, you know, if you're going to trade something, it'll be a little easier to trade. But guys, let's face it, people get really serious about their coffee. And this goes without saying, toilet paper. And guys, we've seen it first part of this year. It was crazy. Toilet paper just was almost impossible to get. And this is something, especially in the Western world, that we need on a regular basis. And so make sure you have not only toilet paper, but napkins and paper towels, things like that. Those are all going to be good bartering items. One thing that's kind of in this same genre, it would be diapers. Uh, you know, and people, especially mothers, I mean, they go through diapers so fast with little children. Uh, and so I would actually consider more toward cloth diapers to have some on hand just in case because they're reusable. Bleach. Bleach is a big one. Non-scented is the most important one to get, but this cleans water, it cleans surfaces, you can wash your clothes. I mean, you can do a lot of different things with bleach. Uh, with your soap, uh, and this is actually a laundry detergent type soap, laundry bar and stain remover, but having your standard bars of soap or even liquid soap. Because hygiene is important in an SHTF situation, and so you're going to be able to keep clean, and people are going to be looking to be clean. Matches and lighters. This is a big one. Uh, you want to start a fire, you want to be able to cook, light a lantern, do whatever. I mean, fire is one of the number one survival tools to use. It's something that man has been using from the beginning, and being able to create fire is important. I would not stock up on a lot of fire steels. For myself, I would, but not to hand out. And so, you know, you give them a lighter and you can do some trading, matches, definitely. Uh, and one thing I do is every time I'm at a grocery store or wherever that has a lot of products, even in a convenience store, I will pick up some extra lighters and I just put them back. This is the easiest way to start fire. Now, one of the problems with a lighter is that it will run out of fuel at some point, uh, and then that gives you some more business if you have a lot of lighters. But for barter items, these things are great, and plus you can use them yourself. And a lighter with a beautiful woman is just even better. Yeah, not so much. And with lighters, uh, candles. Candles, having lots of candles would be great. Uh, of course, you can have lanterns with fuel and things like that, but that gets more complicated. Uh, candles are cheap. They're easy to store. Just keep them, you know, temperature controlled, and then you'll have candles and people will have light. Which leads us to batteries and having some good batteries put aside definitely at all. If you have any kind of kids playing game gaming systems, <laughs> you know that batteries, we get through a lot of batteries. Uh, get the common type batteries, the definitely the double A's, triple A's, things like that. Uh, even the CR123's, we do store up those as well. But rechargeable batteries, while they're great, you've still got to have a way to charge them. So having stocked back some of the standard Duracell type batteries or energizers or whatever, I would get good quality batteries because they last longer. These are guaranteed to last for 10 years in storage. And so this is a great way, and sooner or later you're going to use them anyway. But being able to get batteries out for a number of different electronics, this is big. Tarps. Tarps for survival, tarps, tarps for shelter, tarps to protect things and cover things. Definitely a must. People are going to be looking for tarps. They're fairly reasonable. Uh, this one just happens to be one that has the mylar inside, so it's a space blanket. I would not be giving one of these out. I would get the standard, just the plain tarps. And then if you ever need it, you have a hole in your roof from a storm, or you have some kind of repair that needs to be done, you can cover it. Even if you have a busted out window in your vehicle, using a tarp, there's so many different uses. Having socks, they're cheap. You can store up a whole bunch, give them out if you need them. It's something that will wear out after a while. People are gonna be needing socks. Most of your thrift stores and homeless shelters, they don't get enough socks. That's the number one thing they're missing. So make sure you store up on socks, not only for barter, but also for yourself in an SHTF situation. Basic hand tools, just hammer, pliers, wrench, screwdrivers, basic hand tools and that pretty much goes without saying i think throwing in some pry bars in here saws i have a number of different toolboxes where i keep my tools and having extras i usually do anyway so if if it really came down to it i could possibly trade off some of my tools if i needed to but having tools will really help people to do repairs help people to build things just a lot of reasons to have tools and of course duct tape 
And also in the tool category, you have knives. And uh, knives go for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of things you can do with knives, and it is your number one survival tool. And so people are probably going to be looking for knives. Uh, you can have different numbers. It doesn't have to be anything of super quality. Uh, this is a Glock field knife. They run about $25, but there's a lot of knives out there that are much cheaper. And so you can find something that you can have set back. And if you need it, you got it. But tools, self-defense, tools to split wood, to do a lot of different things, even to cut meat, cut rope, whatever. So a knife is definitely one of the most important tools. Again, guys, your bartering items are currency. It's going to give you the ability to be able to trade for things that you need by having things that other people need. And again, you can't have everything that you need in the foreseeable future. And in an SHTF situation, guys, you're going to have some needs and having those extra items are going to be able to get you through a lot easier. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Because seriously, guys, again, because, I mean, actually you can go with water filters. I mean, there's a ton of different water filters. Okay. Now next, okay. now the next two that are, now the next two that, okay. and if you're a bard and you're playing beautiful music in exchange for goods, that's a real way to barter. <laughs>